Professor Fotopoulou, you have just presented at the Mayo Conference here in Berlin. In short, what were the key takeaway messages from your session, Hype, Hype or Hope? So that was a very, uh, a very nice session where we discussed a lot of controversies around HIPA currently in, the, uh, implement, in its implementation in advanced ovarian cancer surgery. There was a recent study that was published uh, from the Netherlands groups about the benefits of HIPA in advanced ovarian cancer for initially presumed inoperable patients, which showed a significant prolongation of PFS and OS. Um, this study was uh, often or is being often used to extrapolate findings to a broader patient population and say that and assume that HIPAC is beneficial for all ovarian cancer patients which is not being given by the study what we emphasize and we discussed during the session is that it's a very small cohort of populations that is affected by the study these are the patients who are presumed to be inoperable in the beginning and then have a such reductive effort after three cycles of chemo, there, there is a benefit shown. However, if we take the all commerce uh, of ovarian cancer, where a patient can be optimally debulked in the beginning of the disease, we absolutely have no survival benefit there or evidence that HIPAC is actually beneficial. There is a second study from the Korean group that was uh, presented exactly in the same session like the, the Netherlands study that showed absolutely no benefit neither in OS nor in PFS for ovarian cancer all commerce. We uh, discussed that this study will be published soon and we have the results for a broader population. Till then we should not extrapolate the results of the Netherlands study to all patients with ovarian cancer. Yesterday we heard Dr. Inchi talk about uterus transplantation. Have you had any experience with this procedure so far and do you believe that one day this might become a standard option for post-cancer patients looking to have children? Uh, uterine transplantation, I didn't talk about that. No, no, you, you mean in general? Yeah. yeah, okay. So, uterine transplantation is a very interesting new technique that will give hope to many patients with uh, uh, the uterus, not just after cancer, but also genetically. Th th there are people, who, there are women who are born without a uterus, uh, with vaginal abnormalities, with uterine abnormalities, so that they have to have a hysterectomy in early years. I think uh, for those patients who have a benign so who are born, for example, without a uterus, uterine transplantation is a very big uh, revolution, yes. In cancer patients, for example, advanced ovarian cancer, we need to be very careful to compare, to, to put, um, yeah, to, to put everything under perspective because the survival of the patients is, of course, not as good as one would expect so that we can raise a child above the, yeah, to a specific age. Uh, in patients who have lost their uterus, for example, for a cervical cancer or for, a, for, for endometrial cancer, we now have come very far into doing fertility sparing surgery or fertility sparing management for those women. So it's not that we immediately have to take out the uterus and do a uterine transplantation, but we can work around the diagnosis so that these women can have a uterus with their own children. Um, and of course, we can't forget that uh, I I many of the women who don't have a uterus and need or would think a uterine transplantation, they still have ovaries. So you can have an egg collection. And these women can have a surrogate mother who can just carry their child. So there are options outside of the uterine transplantation, but of course, as a technique and as an option, is something extra that is, of course, very welcoming and will be uh, a big help for many women. And one last question. In the future, do you believe that surgery for gynecological cancer type might become obsolete through widespread genetical testing and pap smears and other prevention and early detection measures? Yeah, so the dream, the dream will be, I, I, I saw a Star Trek, I don't know if you know Star Trek, the science fiction series when I was uh, little, where there was a doctor who had a scan machine who would scan the body and he would say, you have one starting cancer cell in your breast, we just take it out and it's all done. So yes, of course, if we reach that point where everything can be remo everything can be genetically, um, yeah, everything can be diagnosed in a very early cellular stage, uh, or we can even go there that we manipulate genetically so that uh, specific cancers don't even uh, don't even appear. Of course, we we won't need to operate anymore. I mean, if you if you. If you speak in, a, in extremes, you can say that surgery is, is the failure of medicine, yeah, because we have failed to diagnose early this disease. Of course, but I really don't believe that I will live to see that, or even my children will live to see that. 
Till then, we need to be sure as gynae oncologists to offer the maximum surgical quality for our patients. Professor Fotopoulou, thank you very much for your time.